feel very good. I'm not thinking about concession speech or acceptance speech yet. Power to change this country is in your hands. It is Election Day 2020, and we are likely just hours away before we find out who the country will choose as its new leader. Good evening, I'm Shelley Rabando. And I'm Doug Fernandez. Both nationally and locally, Action 7 News is watching every angle of it for you. Now, we have team coverage all across New Mexico covering the key races, including the close ones for U.S. Senate, Congressional District 2, as well as Districts 1 and 3. And we're staying up to date on the polls and bringing you live expert analysis all night long. But tonight, the campaign season like no other between President Donald Trump and former VP Joe Biden will start to come to a close. Today, Biden was in Pennsylvania while President Trump spent the morning in the RNC annex. Now, plenty of battleground states are in play tonight where each candidate has spent the last few weeks. And here they are, the states generally agreed on as ones to watch this evening. There's the list. Here is another look at how both candidates are performing in New Mexico before the polls close. Joe Biden has risen just a little bit more since yesterday, leading by close to 12 points. Now, in 2016, Hillary Clinton was leading by about six points. That's before our former governor, Gary Johnson, took up more of that vote. That's why it was a little bit close. Now, 270 electoral college votes are needed to win the White House. Now, one of our votes are counted. New Mexico will award our states five votes to the winner. Security officials throughout the country are on high alert to protect the election against hackers. The biggest threat, disinformation from foreign players. We do remain on high alert here at DHS and CISA throughout the day and beyond to make sure that the integrity of our election infrastructure is maintained. DHS actually launched a website to combat common issues today called Rumor Control. Top officials are closely watching disinformation efforts from Russia, Iran, and China. But they assure voters the vote count is secure. More than 100 million ballots have already been cast. These votes represent more than 47 percent of registered voters nationwide and 73 percent of the total cast in 2016. 21 states, including New Mexico and Washington, D.C., have seen more than half of their registered voters cast ballots already. The mass the voting turnout also reflected here in New Mexico. We've passed our 2016 total, as we just told you, with more than 860,000 New Mexicans casting their ballots. But of course, that number will climb with ballots from Monday and today. Reporter Stella Sun is live with the voters still making their way to the polls. Hey, good evening. Just a few hours before those polling locations close at 7 p.m., you can see at this polling place on the west side, there isn't a line formed outside. But the poll workers here tell me that wasn't the case earlier this morning when they opened up shop at 7 a.m. They did see about 38 people waiting in line to cast their ballot. Now, the Secretary of State's office, they tell us that 89,000 people have voted today, but we need 180,000 more folks to vote in order to break that voter turnout. Now I want to show you something. Just take a look behind me. You can see that this polling location on the west side even blocked off portions of this shopping plaza so that political caravans wouldn't be driving by and be trying to sway voters as they walked into this polling location here. Now we will bring you more updated numbers on that voter turnout as the night progresses. But for right now, reporting live in Albuquerque, Stella Sun, KOAT, Action 7 News. Now absentee ballots can be dropped off until 7 p.m. As ballots are cast, there are some critical close races which could be swayed by just a few votes. One of those is the race for Senator Udall's Senate seat, where these two candidates you see here have been on the offense for months. Let's go to reporter Brittany Hope watching Ben Ray Lujan's efforts for the Senate. Good I am following Congressman Ben Ray Lujan's campaign from here at the Democratic Party's headquarters in downtown Albuquerque. The congressman himself tonight is up in Nambe doing all of that last minute campaigns and phone calls virtually. Right before coming on air, I caught up with him on this Zoom call. He said there are three issues that are the most important to him in this race tonight, tackling COVID, health care, and creating more economic opportunities in our state. Remember, Representative Lujan is a six term congressman from up in northern New Mexico. Tonight, he has a fair lead ahead of his opponent, Republican Mark Ronchetti. That's where Kayla Norwood is right now. I'm Kayla Norwood in Albuquerque with the Ron Ketty campaign, and I spoke with Mark Ron Ketty, the former meteorologist who is now running as a Republican in the U.S. Senate, and he told me that he is feeling good today. He knows he left it out all on the table, and so today he and his campaign, they are putting in calls, sending text messages to his supporters, 
who he says are fired up. And so he just wants to make sure that they make it out to the polls like he did. He and his family, they headed out to the Northeast Heights, to La Cueva High School. That is where he cast his ballot this morning. And then tonight he will be here at Marriott Albuquerque in Uptown. And this is where he will be watching the results come in and will be with him following this race. Doug. Well, this is a key race for our state as Senator Tom Udall is leaving after more than a decade. Our political expert Brian Sandoroff is here. Brian, talk about first why this is so important for Ben Ray Lujan. Well, you know, Ben Ray Lujan is one of the most powerful members currently in the U.S. House. So it's, it's important to him because he's risking everything in order to get a promotion to the U.S. Senate. Would you call this race close? In your last poll, it showed about an eight-point advantage for the Democrat. Well, eight percentage points I cat categorize as a comfortable lead. But every poll does have a margin of error, and so we'll just have to wait and see what happens tonight. Well, following the money, it's been said that Congressman Lujan has spent more money this time around than all of his other campaigns combined. And some of it is outside money. Is his party concerned? Is that why they're sending money in? I think the party and the political action committees are cautiously optimistic, but it was interesting to see them spending more money in the last couple of weeks. Talk about Mr. Lujan's challenger, Mark Ronchetti. When you talk about name recognition, you have always told me, I've been doing this with you for 18 years, for someone to take on a big name, you need a really big name. And Mark Ronchetti is pretty much known over the entire state of New Mexico. Right. Mark Ronchetti is a political newcomer, but he came with a certain amount of notoriety. And that has really helped him in his campaign. If he were unknown, he'd be down so much more in the polls. All right, Brian, thank you. We'll be with us coming up later tonight at 9 and 10 as well. Thank you. Let's head to southern New Mexico now, where both candidates in one of the closest races in the country are working to close the gap of just two percentage points that separate them. We have Action 7 News reporters with both members of this ticket. Let's go first to Brandon Evans. And Brandon, Sotil Torres Small is looking to hold on to her seat in a very tight race. U.S. Rep. Sotil Torres Small believes she's done some good work in the first two years. But she's also believing there's still work to be done, which is why she's fighting for every vote she can. Today, making a stop at her old stomping grounds, Mayfield High School here in Las Cruces. Speaking with the U.S. Congresswoman, she believes that it could come down to which candidate gets more voters to the polls in these final hours. More than 20,000 votes have been cast today in Doñana County. That's the difference that it will make. So people showing up today know, people watching TV right now should know that they could be the final deciders for who represents them for the next two years. And as close as the race was in 2018, it could be even closer this year. And her opponent is the same. And now we go to Alamogordo. Shelly Leggett is there. And Shelly, what is the energy like there? Brandon, the energy here has been pretty relaxed. We just spoke to Yvette Harrell, who is here in Alamogordo waiting for results. She says she spent the last 24 hours reaching out to people who hadn't voted yet over the phone, through social media and on the ground. But she also took some time to relax with her friends and family. She says she's nervous, but also excited and confident as a Republican candidate because of the support rallying behind President Donald Trump. Just having President Trump at the top of the ticket has really it's stirred up a lot of enthusiasm throughout the state, throughout the district, and really throughout the country. Harrell says that this go around, she was a much stronger candidate, but the race again is a close one. So she is once again urging people to get out and vote if you have not done so. In Alamogordo, Shelley Leggett, KOAT Action 7 News. Doug? Back. Republican Party of New Mexico offered rides to the poll today, and they are still available until 6 o'clock. Now, the party said when it comes to the votes tonight, we can choose a future of hope, of freedom, of prosperity, of safety, and preservation of our families. The Democratic Party of New Mexico is hosting a virtual election night celebration. Governor Lujan Grisham and Senators Tom Udall and Martin Heinrich will be there. They'll watch election night results come in through the evening, and you can sign up if you'd like at the link on your screen. That event starts at 8 o'clock. Still to come, voter turnout and election security in New Mexico. We sit down with the Secretary of State to find out how your vote is being counted. And Marissa. The fight for votes right here in Bernalillo County reaching the finish line. I'll tell you how the District 1 candidates are spending those final hours of Election Day. Nancy? I'm Nancy Laughlin. We're taking you to northern New Mexico where two women are fighting it out for Ben Ray Lujan's old seat. The outlook for these candidates when we come back.